Alright, hello people. Uh, I do apologize for the loud noise in the background. That is my computer fan and it's kind of clogged up, but hopefully as we start our uh, stream that should uh, disappear. But hello, hello, this is New Sensei. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. That That's the camera, that's the microphone. <laughs> Hi everyone. It's been a while since the last of the live stream, but uh, here we go. This is the last a live stream of 2017. So uh, what I've done, I've collected quite a few questions. Um, I did miss a few questions from the last AMA, so I'm gonna go back and pick those up. And I've collected a few questions from Facebook and from YouTube. So um, if you have any extra questions, feel free to ask me, as usual. And uh, we'll go through this in several segments. I want to first see, I'm going to have a bit of a reflection on the uh, the year that it was. Uh, I think everybody is going through that phase right now. It's in the new year, so you're starting to reflect and think about your, what you've done. I have to check the sound for a bit. Um, yeah, sound seems okay. It's also keep talking, the fan will turn up. Um, yeah, so what I want to do is to um, talk through... Uh, some of my thoughts about the year as far as archery goes and then we'll go through the questions and then we'll go through your live questions and of course feel free to ask questions as we go along I'm going to pop the chat out so I can see what is happening so welcome to everybody who's joined in um, it's nice seeing everybody pop, pop in I'm sure you have better things to do in your day but uh, joining me in a live stream is pretty cool so yeah 2017 archery yeah wow it's been um as of all things, highs and lows, um, I'd say that this year I have uh, done perhaps the least amount of archery. <laughs> like, you know, I kind of went to the year thinking, all right, I'm going to shoot tournaments, I'm going to get rankings, I'm going to try for a state team, and in the end, I've done the complete opposite. I've like done the least amount of shooting. Instead, I've tried to consolidate um, what I've been doing at the club level rather than the state level. So uh, I'm nowhere near an accomplished archer, and uh, if anything, I have um, really let myself slide. Like, like I said, I haven't. I, I spent like six months not doing archery, and I spent six months doing admin and report writing, and um, I've pretty much fallen well short of all my archery goals. Of course, that said, I've done a lot more elsewhere, which is great. Uh, but I think from a personal point of view, it's been a rather um, disappointing archery year. And again, the lack of any results really goes to show that I've lost that touch. But on the flip side, the fact that I've um, gone through this period and not quit archery outright is, I guess, a bit of a sign. Uh, normally by this stage, once I stop doing something, I kind of move on. And six months is a long time to be away from something. And I don't know, something's still there. Uh, there was still a chance to pursue something, maybe. It all comes down to you know discipline and motivation and focus. And the fact that I've let go of my um, primary admin duties hopefully means I've got my, more time to invest in myself. Um, in fact, something I'm trying to, to do more often is to be more selfish. Uh, I mean, there are still people who come to a club in there to close and I still open up for them and I run for them. And I've realized, you know, what am I doing? Like, you know, they're, they're paying their fee to have a shot with us and I run a lesson. But, like, I don't get paid for I'm, I'm a volunteer, right? So why am I volunteering my own training time to open the club up and teach other people to shoot? That's what I should be doing in my normal time, right? So uh, I, I'm being far too nice and I've just chosen to let go of everything. Um, I had no qualms about just giving it all up so I can focus more on shooting. I think that was the most critical point in my uh, archery career or my, my, my archery reflection this year because I think like I, I, I left my admin duties at a point where I probably still could have done more but I didn't want to wait until after I burned out before I quit. So I chose to go while I was still ahead. Um, and when it came to the end of the year for the school term, I really felt that crunch hit hard. And um, yeah, I was glad that I chose to uh, let go of my duties at the time I did because that foresight was there. I, I felt that you know if I if I combine the stress of running the club along the stress of being a teacher, that would have been um, extremely uh, intense and stressful, and that probably would have killed my entire interest. So um, that's my main reflection. I would have liked to do more archery, but in the year ahead, I would like to do more. 
And coming back to it, I'm trying to do a bit more practice more regularly. Um, the fact I've got so many bear bows, like my horse bow and my um, my traditional uh, re uh, recurve bows, uh, hopefully that should um, that that should kind of motivate me to at least do more shooting in the backyard. I've got a reasonably safe setup now, uh, aiming towards uh, a stump and a tree, so nothing go past. So um, that way, at least I can get some practice. Uh, like with many Olympic shooters, just can't be bothered putting your whole bow together for a short practice in the backyard. So I, you know, hopefully keeping my other bow set up and uh, shooting without too much of a, a worry should at least give me some conditioning, if not um, get me more prep for my actual discipline. So that's my uh, main reflection. So let's go through our questions. And again, if you have any actual questions for me, feel free to post them in the chat. Um, tag my name. I uh, use the at sign with new sensei. So that way I can actually see the question. I might miss it when I scan through. Uh, we'll go through the questions first. I'll do our call out for questions in a moment. Uh, but I'll, I'll go through my prepared questions first. So uh, you know what? Because you asked me right away. Uh, question from Jonathan. All right, just just for you. All right, is it absolutely terrible if I use a modern Rika meant for Olympic style target for bear bow? Um, no, that is completely fine. In fact, most bear, most modern bear bow shooters would use a modern target bow. So a bow like the Forge Plus or the Forged Alpha would be completely fine for bear bow. That's what people actually use it for. Um, remember, bear bow only dictates that you can't use sight and long rod stabilizers. So, um, so you can definitely use a modern uh, riser. They're designed for that, really. So that's completely fine. So that's my first question. There you go, Jonathan. Stole my thunder. Uh, that's the question for you. So I, back to my uh, questions now. Um, so first question. Uh, these are ones which were missed earlier. Um, from Peter Shah, and we've chosen a very good question for our first one tonight. After so many years of archery. For me, at six, which isn't that much, but after so many years, does it ever start to feel old and redundant? That is perhaps the question of the day. Really, we start with the best question. I really think this is a good one. <coughs> so, um, so do I feel archery get getting old? It's a good question because archery is very repetitive. You're really doing the same thing over and over again. Day in, day out, week in, week out, and for months and years at a time. So, of course, it's going to feel like a little repetitive, right? But here's the thing which I find fascinating about our trend. This is a personality thing, and a lot of people, I think, share this, because I think this is why so many people are drawn to our trend. Archery isn't repetitive in that you do the same thing over again. Archery is more like, Everything you do, every shot you do, feels like it's the first time you've done it. Because after every shot, you reset the whole process. So it's like doing it again from the beginning. That's actually true for a shot cycle. Everything begins from the beginning. So you can't... Uh, people who do archery then think, um, Oh, this is going to be the same shot as I always do. It's never like that. It's like every shot you do is something you really work for. It's not like you're writing lines out in detention or, you know, you're just like doing the same old data entry typing job. Really, I think um, that the appeal of archery is that people who like doing one thing and trying to get it right will always chase that perfection. It's really elusive, almost um, paradoxical that you're trying to go for the perfect shot, but you can't actually get there. So that's a really good question. And for me, it doesn't get old because I'm always doing something different with every shot. Not always a good thing, but you go through the highs and lows, the peaks and the troughs, and you'll learn new things every single time. So for that reason, I don't find archery repetitive. It's something which I can do a lot. And uh, yeah, to close that question, no, I don't find it old. I don't find it redundant. I do, I do find it exciting to do all the time. So that's usually something which um, I find most people will appreciate. And if you agree to say so, I think um, most of you will be uh, in um, concordance with that uh, idea. 
So that's our first question there. Not bad. Doing okay. I, I, I don't mind this being a long live stream uh, because it is our last one for the year. I'm not sure when I'll do my next one. I have time since I have time off now. Uh, but if there's a particular topic or reason to, I'll pop another one up. But otherwise, this will be the last one. So we'll take our time. Uh, Living Grim has asked the question, uh, do you listen to music while shooting? The answer is no. Uh, main reason is it's a range safety thing. Um, uh, some people who practice by themselves might have headphones and listen to music, but because I shoot in a range, I have to be aware of my surroundings and the instructors and the director of shooting, so I can't put headphones on. Um, that is a safety hazard. And of course, as the instructor of the club, I also mandate that people who learn on the line or shoot on the line don't listen while shooting. Um, I guess, again, if you're doing casual practice, then that's okay. But I consider it to be a safety liability, so we don't do it. Additionally, when you shoot in competition, you, you're supposed to replicate the conditions in which you will compete. You can't listen to music while you compete, so there's little point in listening to music while you practice. It's kind of dissimilar practice, so that's why I don't do it. Next question from James. Have you encountered any video games to have an accurate depiction of our trip? Again, very good question. As far as video games go, uh, I, mean, I find the most fun games with archery are just plain fun. Games like Assassin's Creed Origins um, are fun to play with the archery component because they're just fun. They're not exactly realistic, but they're fun. But in terms of an accurate depiction of archery, in my opinion, from the games I've played, the most accurate depiction of uh, archery in a video game would be mount and blade uh, that shouldn't surprise many of you who've seen the game and of course the sequel coming out um banner lord uh mount and blade i think is an excellent uh archery um depiction not a realistic depiction but a, an accurate depiction the reason why i think mount and blade is an excellent depiction is because i mean the game itself is quite well done it's an independent game it doesn't try to be uh, too over the top in terms of action. It's got very simple sword play and very simple archery mechanics, but done really well. And archery in Mountain Blade is great for a couple of reasons. One, historical bows are well portrayed. You have the horse bows, you have the long bows, um, you can use from horseback, but you know, like archery in real life was a very specialized skill. I mean, people think of like swordsmen as very skilled fighters, and of course they are. But in essence, everybody who is, you know, a footman will learn to use a polearm or a spear, and some people will learn to use a sword. But a bow is truly a specialized weapon. People will learn the skill from hunting, but to use a bow in war is very specialized. This is shown in Mountain Blade because you have to invest a ton of score points to be competent in using a bow. And again, there are a couple of ways in which it does it well. One is that in Mountain Blade, you have to invest in strength to use the bow. And this is something which a lot of games get wrong because archery is not an agility skill or a dexterity skill. Archery is a strength skill. If you don't have strength, you can't pull the bow. Now, I actually remember this time to bring a bow to the live stream so I don't have to uh, pretend I'm holding a bow. So here we go, this, this is a bow, all right? Now the thing is that if you don't have enough strength, you physically can't pull it back at all. So if you have like, you know, um, in a game where this bow might require, let's say seven strength, and you have five strength, you actually can't equip it, you can't actually pull it back at all because it's physically impossible. Whereas if you have sufficient strength set, then you can pull it back, which is fantastic. Um, the other thing which it does well is that if you have the minimum strength requirement, then uh, you can use the bow, but you're not very accurate. So that kind of shows that um, you, can, you can physically use the bow, you can pull it back, but you can't a, you can't control it very well, so the crosshair in the game disperses very rapidly, it's a very wide um, kind of uh, area effect, so it's very hard to be accurate with a um, bow, which you can barely meet. So to get the maximum accuracy of a bow, in other words, get the crosshair down to a single dot, you need to invest like three extra skill points 
into your um, archery skill or your strength rather and then you need um, other skills so that's for foot archery if you want to be a mounted archer you need to invest points in riding you need to invest points in horse archery so it's a very very specialized field and it's not easy um, it's very hard to shoot a target accurately very hard to be shooting on the move and all up i think mountain blade is i mean nowadays it's quite underrated because it's kind of not that triple a game but at the time i had a cult following and it's also a very very excellent uh game and um, i think the sequel would be just as good if you intercept that sandbox kind of thing so that's uh, my answer to uh, um, the most accurate uh, portrayal of archery in games. I think Mountain Blade is the best one. Again, because the mechanics are fairly good and the gameplay is also very good. Um, nice um, game to check out there. All right, next question from Tracy, which is a very long question. By the way, if you do ask me a question, keep it short. Um, some people write paragraphs like that long and have to read through everything to kind of figure out what the question is, but the question isn't very obvious sometimes. And I've had people write like um, 2,000 word emails and I'm trying to find the question somewhere. So it's really hard if you don't ask the question clearly. Keep it nice and brief. That, that, that will give you a high chance of being um addressed in a live video or even just get responded to um question was from tracy how do you stop the v-bar from turning out of position always a problem with v-bars and long rods um don't use loctite you don't need that what you should use is what you should use is washers get ceramic washers not the plastic ones plastic is soft or mold um get ceramic washers and add them to your bolt so that way it will screw in the correct point and will hold in place don't worry about loctite uh morton again very good questions this time around do you think there will ever be a b or and n or uh reference database for archery in other words an archery bible I don't think there will be an archery bible. Um, archery is kind of very fragmented and dispersed, and the fields are so different that there's almost no need to put them into one bible. Like someone who wants to learn about um, traditional Native American archery would not necessarily be looking at a manual for Olympic style archery. They're just so different. I don't think there will be a compilation of one sort for all archery. It's also so hard to see. Um, yeah, it's it's also so hard to see uh, someone compiling that. There's there's opportunity. Like if someone wants to do the research and do that, then there is a space for that. But who would do so, right? Again, the people who practice archery today are so um, pigeonholed in their own discipline that apart from a few who have an understanding of other styles, there's really no one standout expert. It's not like you have like one person who can write about all fields of um, Japanese martial arts or European martial arts. You need someone who has the historical research, who has the passion interest and has the skill to practice all styles. And I don't think there's anyone out there who is competent at shooting all styles of archery enough to where they can compile it. If there is a compilation, it's going to be from a historical point of view uh, and not necessarily from an archery point of view. So I don't think there'll be a technical bible or a guide for all archery. It might just be informational and encyclopedic. That's about it. I mean, but even like today, when we have such a rich um, online community, we can crowdsource things. It's really hard to um, envision that um, you know, people will work together on this project. I mean, what the closest thing is, the red, uh, the uh, yeah, the uh, archery subreddit um, has a wiki page, which is, in my opinion, fairly badly maintained because no one reads it and no one edits it, and it just contains. Um, snobbish um, commentary from people who shoot other styles so it's just really nasty to kind of work with the people who don't agree with you and the forums have similar problems where you have a, a predominant culture or a predominant mentality which stops people being open-minded and I think the thing lacking about archery as a community is that many people are not open-minded enough to learn and appreciate other styles so it's really hard to make advances in terms of research and compilation. So I don't think there will be a, um, a single reference for all our dream. 
Um, question from Ethan. Have you shot at other archery clubs around Australia? Um, I haven't been around that much, especially I haven't been in the state. So I've only shot around in several Melbourne clubs. Uh, the clubs I've been to include Morabin, uh Waverley City Archers, uh, Diamond Valley Archers, and uh, AIM Archery Club. Now, I haven't been anywhere else yet. That will change, you know, as I do more shooting, if I do more shooting. But uh, I've only shot at a few Melbourne clubs. I haven't really been elsewhere. Um, next question. Uh, Meander, how does one select different lengths of stabilizers? I've done a video on this already. Um, to select stabilizers, it's really about look and feel. Um, there is no one correct answer. I do have my guide on how to choose the right length about in terms of balancing and weight, but really it's about how it feels to you. Some people have developed a very refined um, feeling for what the bow should handle or should weigh like in your hand that's your main guide but you can't really go wrong with stabilizers it's mostly getting it more right for you so there's no one way it's going to be uh what suits you the most so start somewhere then experiment and that might mean spending more money on more weights or different rods but that's money well spent if you're serious about tuning your bow and getting it right for you Whew, all right, next question from Michal. Can you put a D loop on a recurve string? Yes, of course. Uh, that is something some people do, uh, field shooters and hunters. Uh, yes, you can put a, uh, a D loop on a recurve string. Uh, and you can shoot the D loop uh, in the same way that you shoot a, uh, a, a compound bow with a release aid. The reason why you normally don't is because it does convey much advantage to a recurve shooter. Remember that a compound shooter um, can use the bow's let off to hold the bow steady, whereas with a recurve, you've got the release aid, which nearly guarantees a perfect release compared to using your fingers, but you, you're still holding the entire weight of the bow on the release aid. So it's something which a lot of people um, will not do because it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, you people shoot Rika because it feels more natural. When you start putting um, a D loop and use a release aid, you can't defeat in the point of a recurve. Why not shoot compound, right? Because the compound is about mechanical perfection and you're still using it, but it's supposed to be clean and precise, whereas a recurve is meant to be more physical. So there is a, a principle thing where uh, people find there's no point, and it's also not as easy as it looks. So um, th th there are disadvantages in doing so. A uh, question from Nerf, is it normal for the string to scrape your lips? Um, not normal, like it shouldn't be that bad where you're actually like skinning your lips. Uh, some Rico shooters will put the string very close, like really pressing against their lips here. So that it should leave like a bit of a, um, like, like a, a mark where you see the string come across your, your face, but it shouldn't um, scrape it. If, if, you're, if you're scraping it, I've got a feeling you're either putting it way too tight or the, or the angle of your face is wrong where it's actually cutting across your face. So you might need to look at the way your um, head is angled. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really think that um, it's not normal. It's not abnormal, but it's also not something that, that should be something you notice. Most people will just touch the lips and will come off cleanly and there's no, um, there's no uh, inter interaction. If there is, then check your head position. Um, Aratha Nox, uh, how reliable were bows during past ages? Talk about medieval or ancient bows. I've got no reason to think why, um, like an ancient bow would be bad. Unless it's really poorly made, like literally chopped from a tree branch and strung together. It, I mean, the bows that were manufactured were manufactured with expertise passed on to generations. They had it down to as much of a skill as possible. Today we have science and technology on our side. Um, but with, with the ancient bows, they were made and like the really quality ones, not the like stick and string ones, which are made for like poachers and hunters, but the serious war bows, the English war bows, the, uh, the Mongolian horse bows, the Egyptian bows that are made from composite materials. Those would have been extremely durable. Um, you don't find much today because these organic materials, they will, they won't, um, last, you know, if you're buried in the ground for a few decades or a few centuries. Which is why, like, bows are quite red fine in terms of, um, archaeology. But, um, the bows would have been extremely reliable. And even today, bows, 
unless you put a bow in a really hot place and let it delaminate, the bow should last forever. Um, and same with uh, real life bows in history. Stefan has a very good question. If I feel comfortable at a certain distance, is it better to increase distance? Or shoot at a smaller target and this is um, almost the same thing almost right but it's not quite the same thing if you are shooting and you're okay with one distance in my opinion the correct uh, well the the more challenging level the next level up would be to shoot further distance while a smaller target will replicate what the um, actual target will look like at long distance a smaller target at short distance will require you to be more precise in your aim. A longer distance will punish bad form because any errors made in this part will be magnified at long distance. So if you shoot at a small target and you make a slight mistake, it might still be like a gold, but just off to, off to the side or something, right? But if you're shooting long distance, say 50 or 60 or 70 meters, and you make a millimeter mistake here, it'll be a whole color off target. So I do think that the next step up is to shoot longer distance rather than smaller targets. Both are equally challenging, but the longer distance will punish bad for more. 101, Mr. Pringles. Do metal recurve risers offer a serious advantage over wooden trainer recurves with around four months of experience? In other words, for novices. Uh, metal risers, in terms of performance, are accepted to be much better than wooden risers. And the reason why is mostly because of vibration control. They're a much more efficient bow, which means the arrow should go up faster compared to a wooden recurve. So there are small differences, but the weight and vibration control are the main ones. So you can squeeze out more speed from a metal bow than from a wooden bow. And generally speaking, yes, a metal bow should outperform a wooden bow. The thing here is that we're talking about novices so about four months of experience in four months people are just consolidating their form they're starting to develop the consistency so there's a very very um, big difference between um uh, you know a metal bow and a wooden bow in the hands of an intermediate archer and the same different bows same different the different bows in a novice archer with a novice the bottleneck isn't the um the bow the bottleneck is the user so if you talk about four months there shouldn't be much difference between someone using a wooden bow and a metal bow whereas with, with more experience the difference will be a lot more noticeable so that depends on the user at that level it's all the user and not the bow all right drink break I still have five more questions, six more, and then we go through the um, the junior questions. Um, so, uh, Peter, or Peter, depending on where you're from, three finger or thumb release. Um, hey, having done thumb release now, having learnt thumb release, and it's been so much fun shooting thumb. Um, yeah, that's a good question now. Uh, yeah, I, I think it just depends on the style you shoot. Um, if you shoot western styles, then three finger. If you shoot eastern style, then thumb. There's really uh, I don't find that there's any reason to like use a thumb draw with a western bow or use a three. I mean, you can use a three three finger with an eastern bow, I guess. But um, yeah, it just depends on the bow you use. I mean, people who shoot these styles um, try for authenticity. Um, I I do actually find that the um, the thumb draw. I actually enjoy thumb draw more. Now that you asked me that question, having shot Med Mediterranean three finger for like six years. Uh, and I've done thumb draw for like you know, six days. Um, I do enjoy thumb draw more. I honestly do. Uh, maybe it's more inclined to culturally what I would have done if I was like a warrior a thousand years ago. Um, but I, f I actually personally prefer the thumb draw. But again, I've only done it for a few days, so I can't really say for sure. But um, yeah, I otherwise, three finger draw for everything I do. But thumb draw, I kind of do like a bit more. So, good question then. Next up, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> glove or tab? I'll, I'll do both, right? Uh, depends on the purpose. I think overall tab, 
but glove is just more practical. So if I'm shooting like a traditional bow, I use a glove. But I'm shooting in my um, you know, in my club, my target bows or my beginner bows or my recurve bow, I use a tab. So um, yeah, glove for specific purposes, but in general, tab. Whew. All right, next up, uh, Keen Torres. What arrow spine is suitable for forty to fifty pound recurve bow? I reckon um. A 400 spine would be in the in the in the ballpark for that kind of bow. 300 to 400 would be roughly a aim. It depends on your draw length, how long your arrow will be. I mean, I, I use like a 500 spine um, for. I mean, I can I use a 600 spine, but I've got a very short arrow, so they they're equivalent to a 500. But again, my short draw means that my actual draw weight is around 36. So that makes more sense. If you're shooting between 40 to 50, then between 300 to 400 would be a better match for you. 400, I would say being, being safe. 300 is actually very stiff. More of a compound arrow. Uh, Brian. Uh, Brian is participating in a competition after only three months. Do you have any advice to be successful? The main advice I give for someone starting out that early in competition is define success. Actually set success criteria. And for most people, the success criteria should be complete the tournament, have fun. Don't worry about success or results. For your first tournament, that should not be your concern. And especially at only three months of archery, you should not worry about trying to win the tournament. If you do, then it's great. But it's more about how well you've prepared up to that point. Because, again, I'm of the opinion that you don't perform miracles in competition. Competition is a reflection of what you do in practice. You don't shoot better than you normally do. You shoot what you normally do, or worse, because there's pressure and there's exhaustion and so on. So basically, keep in mind that it's going to be what you normally do. Treat the competition like another practice session. So if you don't win, that's not a concern for you. Simply keep on working at it. And next time you come back and beat your personal best. And maybe next time your personal best will be higher than the person's um, score. So you might win. But overall, it's not about being successful, it's about having fun for your first competition. Afterwards, set clearer goals once you've done it for the first time. But your, first, your very first competition should be have fun, enjoy it, um, and do your best. Uh, Dylan, how do you feel about PVC bows and slingshot archery? I haven't really come across PVC or slingshot bows, so I can't really comment on that. So I have, I have no opinion. A lot of people ask me about PVC bows, but I really don't have an opinion on PVC because I haven't shot one, so no comment. I mean, it's, uh, people will do it for DIY, and I think that's why most people do it, uh, that you can't get a bow, or you do it because of uh, DIY uh, interest rather than um, any practical purpose so I, I suppose they're okay but pvc bows will give you an impression of archery but it won't give you a very good impression of archery or what real archery is and the, and the final two prepared questions will be um from alex due to budget is it okay to start with a bear bow and then add the olympic reek of accessories yes of course that's quite normal bows bows aren't cheap um especially when buying the modern target recurves they can be quite expensive so it wouldn't be surprising to start with just the bare uh, minimum the bare essentials and then add the side and the stabilizers later on that's completely fine are there any problems in doing so no in fact you know by the time you can afford the accessories you're probably still learning the basics of archery so stance and release and all that those skills are transferable to freestyle recurve so there's no downside in not using your full kit right away if you can't afford it um just do bear in mind that if you can afford it in my opinion the sooner you start shooting your preferred style the faster you become proficient in that style um you shouldn't spend like months or years doing bare bow and then move to freestyle because the styles actually aren't that similar the fundamentals are the same so release follow through, back tension, they're all things you need to practice. But you can learn all that with your freestyle kit without having to graduate from a bare bone. So if you can't get it because of economical reasons, then go for it, that's completely fine. But the sooner you do so, the, the sooner you um, get your freestyle kit, the better, if that's what you intend to shoot. If you don't intend to shoot freestyle, then don't worry about it. And the last question from Alex again, 
Archers tend to use matching rods and limbs. Is there a reason for this? It's most because, you know, it's guaranteed quality. If, if I have a win and win riser, I'll probably use win and win limbs. There are a couple of good reasons. Um, you know, they're often sold together or marked together. You can easily find them paired up. Uh, also, um, bear in mind that a lot of the uh, risers, which are ILF, remember, international limb fitting is not a standard. It's a convention. So people or manufacturers will make things because it's easy to do, make money by selling things which are cross-compatible. Um, but bear in mind that IOF will have variations. So a bow, for, uh, let's say a Fivix limb might not be a perfect fit for a Sebastian flute riser. There might be some play where it won't fit just quite right because it's the same system, but it's not made to the same exact specifications. Whereas a win and win limb should fit a win and win riser without a problem. And again, most ROF limbs will fit most ROF risers without a problem. There might be some compatibility issues. But the main reason is because it's convenient. You can buy the same brand for both. Some pro archers will shoot a Hoyt riser of win and win limbs. Um, I don't think there's any real reason to do so for the average archer. Uh, when you're the pro level, you're mostly driven by sponsorships. So um, you will just get what your sponsor offers you because you don't have to pay for it. Uh, but if you are buying your own gear, you might develop a very, very specific feel for a certain brand or certain model. So that's why you might see some mix and match. But most people buy one brand because brand loyalty plus convenience. Uh, there's no real reason otherwise to do so. And that is the end of my prepared questions. I went through it fairly quickly actually. It took about half an hour to go through all questions there. So I will have a quick drink break and this is the point where you can now ask me the general questions. I'm going to uh, scroll back up to the beginning of the chat and I will go through questions from there. But if you have questions asked now, tag my name so I can easily see the question and we'll spend perhaps another 20 odd minutes going through the final questions for 2017. Oh, God, it's warm. Mm. Man, hydration is so important. It's warm weather here. Alright. I've answered that question already. Let's go through some of the earlier questions. Uh, again, tag my name so I can see where I am. Otherwise, I might miss your question. Uh, Hector Rodriguez. Uh, you just bought a new recurve bow, and can you put on a knocking point without using the um, level thing, the uh, the T gauge or the the bow square? Of course you can. Um, a, a, a lot of people will um, use the arrow as a reference point. They will um, level the arrow with the riser, so they will kind of roughly eye where the uh, arrow will be, either parallel, um, perpendicular, or slightly pointing downwards, and they'll put the knocking point using the arrow. That's completely fine. The, the, uh, the bow scope gives you a measurement, but in the end, you have to change it anyway, basically, too. So, um, yeah, it's completely fine to not use the uh, bow square. Hmm, let's see. Um, the best uh, from Gokudera Hayato. Uh, I've been meaning to ask you what is the best material among these three? Aluminium, fiberglass, magnesium? I'd say probably aluminium. Um, Aluminium, I mean, of the three, aluminium is the most advanced in terms of technology. Um, the early, sorry, the early metal bows for magnesium, that's largely phased out now. Aluminium is the most common um, modern material. Why? I can't give you a scientific answer, but I can just say that uh, that is probably the most common and the best performing. Fiberglass is pretty flimsy for a bow. Um, it's cheap. It's um, too cheap, and you're not gonna have the same uh, control, performance, vibration, dampening as an aluminium bow. So, of those three, aluminium is what I would vote as the better one. Uh, Ajin Song, uh, full carbon rather than aluminium, uh, that is always gonna be preference. Um, aluminium feels different in hand, it feels a bit more solid. Carbon is lighter, but you need to have stabilizers um, further out to balance it out. So you need better tuning for stabilizers, whereas aluminium can be a bit more forgiving in terms of your weight setup because the rise itself, it can be fairly dense. But for the high-end aluminium, you can hardly tell the difference, really. So it's mostly fuel. I have no um, 
preference over one or the other. I personally like carbon because I like the light central feel with the weights on the outside. Um, other people like aluminium because it's kind of like a chunkier bow, more of a workhorse. Um, Declan production, do you prefer compound or recurve? I don't shoot compound, so that, that's almost a given, I almost say recurve. So, uh, easy question there. <coughs> uh, Bubbly Book <laughs> has answered Goku's question, or Goku Dera's question, I should say Goku. Uh, Goku Dera's different. Um, yeah, aluminium, magnesium, 5 watts in that order. I agree. Um, let's see, Grim Samidi. I watch one of your videos on knocks and you said there's a certain way to stay in your string. I can't find knock massage. Oh, no, knock sizes. Um, is there a consequence for fitting a knock that is slightly snug or a bit too tight? Not really. You will lose some speed because it takes more energy to displace the knock from the string. Now, if it's way too tight and your knocks are loose, then the knock might come off. Um, if you watch my toe point archery reviews, I had that problem. Even with the R3, which I didn't review, but I, test, I tested somebody else's R3. Same problem. The knocks are way too tight, so you lose the knock on the string. Now, if your knocks are glued in, or they're self-knocks, then that's not going to be a problem. But like I said, the main issue is that you'll lose too much energy, because the, it takes more energy for the arrow to be taken off the string. So that's why you shouldn't um, have it too tight. It's better to be too tight than too loose. If it's too loose, it falls off too easily, which might be a danger. You might dry fire your bow uh, unknowingly. Uh, Ante Rada, uh, can I do a DIY target video? No, I don't build my own targets, so I can't really give you instruction how to build a DIY target. Um, let's see. Next question. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can I explain how? Uh, Daz L, do you people at the club attend just talk about how much money they spend on their gear? Oh, okay, Daz L, okay, that's a good question. So, um, you, you, you might find at an archery club, people basically circle jerk over their equipment. Um, honestly, it depends on the club. The club culture is different everywhere you go. That's why some people will go further to a different club because it's smaller and less elitist and so on. I haven't had that experience at my club, but we're a very small club. We're very open and welcoming. I don't care that much. We ooh and ah over every bow. Not, not how much it costs. We're just like, ooh, a new bow. Have fun. I really want people to enjoy their bow. Um, I haven't really come across people who brag about how much money they spend on bows. Um, I mean, some people take their gear very really seriously. It's kind of like people who buy motorcycles or cars. They just talk about how much they spend on the subwoofers or mag wheels or whatever. Um, so people will just love to talk about how much they spend. And considering we live in a, you know, a modern and capitalist consumer society, then it's, it goes without saying that people will basically earn money and spend money and brag about spending money. Uh, I'm not that sort of person. I have money, but I don't spend it. So when I do spend it, who cares? Um, so I haven't come across that sort of attitude, but I wouldn't be surprised if other people have seen it elsewhere. Great question. Uh, Bernard Blackwell. Uh, question was, how can you explain fish telling wind and fish telling wind and the effect on the shot? I'm not sure if you're missing a comma there. Um, Fish telling wind and the effect. If, if you can rephrase that question later on, I might get to it. I'm not sure what I mean by fish telling wind and the effect on the shot. Just rephrase that a bit for me. Um, let's see. Oh, next, do you use a clock face to see how full of shot affects your shot? Again, I'm not sure what the question is how full of shot affects your shot. The full of shot is where your shot lands. I'm not sure what I mean by four shot of fixed shot. I, I, I use um the clock face to say to tell people where it lands. So um, if I'm spawning for someone I'll shout like three o'clock blue. Um and that kind of tells people where it is when they had down the scope. Uh but otherwise um and I don't I don't really uh use clock face unless that's what you mean. So um again sorry for not I'm not understanding your question really clearly. So you want to ask it again just go for it. Uh, Rice Jones, uh, I tried looking around for indoor range, I found very few in my area. 
Why does it seem that indoor is not very popular these days? Depends on where you are. Um, if you're in a major city, then there tend to be there tend to be more indoor ranges than outdoor. But if you're in like a city like in Australia, we've got very big cities. We have more space for archery fields and archery ranges. So it just depends on where you are. Indoor is very popular in some places because of space, whereas in other places, outdoor is far more popular. I mean, for example, here in Australia, we don't have an indoor season. Whereas in other countries, indoor season is half the year. So um. So yeah, it, it does really vary, but where you vary with where you are. Um, Efren Chen, regarding Mandarin duck, do you think shooting a traditional Asian bow will affect shooting with recurve? No, um, the only effect it will have on shooting recurve would be if you neglect recurve practice. If you train both with equal measure, then you shouldn't have a decline in your skill in recurve. I mean, I haven't shot recurve since I shot my traditional Asian bow, but you'll see when I do my videos in the backyard and when I'm training, it, ha it wouldn't really affect my actual form because, again, like, you know, if, if I if I'm like, it's like saying, if, if I write with a pen, it will affect the way I write with a pencil. Now, using a pencil and using a pen are different things. They have similarities, but they have different things. And there is a, a fine amount of finesse, I guess. There's, there's more finesse in using a sharp pencil, or there's more finesse in using a fountain pen, which I write, I write with a fountain pen. So if I go from pencil to a ballpoint pen to a fountain pen, that's similar to talking about Asian bows and trad recurve and Olympic recurve. They're similar skills, but you shouldn't see a detraction in one particular bow type unless you completely neglect it for a long period of time. And even then, you should be able to pick it up again. Uh, I don't think there'll be a penalty for using multiple bow types. Uh, but right, have I ever shot with the SCA? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I, I think there's one around me somewhere, but I haven't looked it up and it's not really my sort of thing. So I'm laughing in general, I don't really um, get into it. Uh, let's see, other questions. Uh, Rev Nolan, I'm looking for an American flatbow to start learning with next year. With 25 pounds, to be correct to start with, that's fine. Um, I mean, most people, most adults, you buy the first bow, we go for 30 to 35 pound. But I, as an instructor, would normally lean towards a lighter side because I assume that not everybody has the average upper body strength. Um, the main thing is that you want to have a bow which you might want to grow into, but not too high because you can't develop good form if you're overpowered by the bow. So yeah, 25 pounds is a safe choice. That's fine. If you can afford to buy a second bow, then completely go for it. Like, you know, upgrade later. But 25 pounds is a safe learning point. You can enjoy your archery as well as um, learn form. Um, 30 pounds is probably my upper limit for an absolute beginner with no training, no guidance. Um, if you're more confident, go for 30 to 35 pounds. But 25 is fine. All right, well. Uh, Bubbly Book, have you ever used one of those ultralight carbon rods? I've seen those. Um, I think the Fiber Bow was one of them. I'm not sure now, but I've, I've heard of that. I think that, yeah, I think Fiber Bow was a really light bow. So I'm a little, I feel gassy at the moment, but um, yeah. Uh, no, I haven't used them. I, haven't, I think I've seen one once in competition, but I haven't actually used one before, so no comment there. Bob Kuhn. Are there Olympic regulations for arrow length or bow weight? No, there, there is no, sorry, there is no, uh, nothing in the World Archery Rules which says how heavy your bow has to be. Uh, there's no limit on that. Um, there, I mean, I've read the rule, it's, it's section 13, by the way, for World Archery, we've been with this quite a few times. So section 13 covers target archery equipment. Um, no, it covers what you can't use, but it doesn't cover bow weight. You can have as heavy or light as you want. The limitation is how um, much you can lift and shoot well. So that's why some people really stack weights on and I find it really crazy, but it's not against the rules. <coughs> well, all right. Um... Ah, yes, uh, Roa Fizan, what's your take on archers who didn't read the rule book and instead just follow what they see on the web for bow setup? That's fine, you know, like, yeah, people, some people know what they're doing. Um, it's like reading the manual, like, and honestly, a good sport or a good design should be intuitive enough where you can figure it out by doing with your hands, without reading the manual. Um, a good manual is very good, or the rule books are useful, but people learn by doing, not by reading manuals. And that's kind of like the way people learn today, so that's fine, nothing wrong with that. 
Um, it helps if you know the rules, but that's some people do later on. For example, like uh, things like learn technique. Like if someone teaches you, you don't need to read. Reading is more of an optional thing to extend your knowledge. But if you have a teacher, then you can rely on your teacher to do so. The more of the more you do by yourself the more you bring back for your coach to teach you more things and correct things. But um, if you just rely on one person to show you things, that's completely fine as well. A good coach will do that. An example, I've got like the entire water archery level 2 coaching guide right behind me. I haven't read it yet. Um, I, I've done my instructor course. I know how to coach, but I haven't really done a lot of serious reading about archery style. Apart from like um, Kissy Glee's um, Inside the Archer, both books, I haven't really read much advanced coaching or advanced shooting. But a lot of things you will learn as you go along, and then as you find out more gaps in your knowledge, you go back and find out more. Uh, Jonna Edwards. Uh, how it lasts in competition? I don't know. It depends on what what style of shooting competition it is. So uh, if it's a uh, like a target round Olympic style, then who knows? We need to see him shoot. I I can't judge someone because I haven't seen him shoot Olympic style. All right. Did I miss a question there before? Uh, I accidentally moved my thing down. I think I found it. Uh, all right, now for the recent questions. Show your trophies. All my trophies are like third place, third class trophies. They're like last place trophies, so nothing worth showing them. Uh, I, I don't compete that much. I mean, again, most of my years have been just got admin work. I haven't done like, any competition. And again, I, I've seen some people start at the same time as me go really far. Um, uh, Jason, um, who I shoot along, usually shoot alongside in every competition, uh, made state team. So clearly, if people can work hard, then they can get where I want to, they want to. And if I work hard, maybe I'll get where I want to. But I admit, I'm, I've been quite lazy. Or, I would say lazy, that's unfair passive in my approach to archery i'm just doing other things and not giving archery the attention it needs so um that is my take on that uh is my order i think i didn't read that by the way uh might, might have lagged a bit there so i uh, didn't read it carefully but uh should be it shouldn't be too bad let's see Ah, yes, other questions. Is it still out of sync, by the way? Uh, I'll, I'll, resume, I'll resume asking questions if it's out of sync, because I've noticed that my um, my bar is kind of red now. It's the internet. I can't, I can't help that. Um, NBN. It's good for some uploads, but I've noticed I'm going yellow and red for some things. Six seconds out of yeah, I can't do much about that. I've got my um, thing set at the right thing, but uh, I think it's just the uh, the upload speed. All right. Um, I mean, you know, we'll we'll finish up shortly anyway, so there's no point trying to dress it right now. Uh, yeah, I, I can't fix it right now. We'll fi we'll finish it up, and then we'll come back next year. Hopefully, things will be better. Um, so last few quick questions. Three, two, two, tour. How did you start gaming? Which platforms? I was a PC gamer all the time. Like I didn't really like my. I started with the Neo Geo, which is a console. Um, but but uh, when I my, my brother owned all the stuff, right? So when he moved out, I played PC. So that's, that's my first gaming platform. Um, other questions. Do you think the equipment uh, between organizations for categories is similar? Um, yeah, so th things about um, that there is a divide between IFAA, NFAS, and WA. Is it confusing for new archers? Um, I actually find no, because people normally compete in the one thing. Uh, the one um, discipline, the one organization. Some will cross over, but I find most people will be okay if they do their own competition because they don't normally do cross um, organization, organization competition. Um, let's see. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sick of the upload. It's green again. It's yellow. Yeah, I might change it next to 720p, but eh, we'll see about that. Uh, Longna as a new archer, and I'm correct to assume I can hold off on tuning efforts uh, until I develop form. Yeah, uh, don't stress about tuning until you have consistent form because, um, again, your form will show. Uh, yeah, if your form is consistent, then you know what the problems on the target are. Uh, if you don't have good form and you can't group, the main thing is when you start grouping, then tuning means something. 
if you can't group, there's no point in tuning. So learn learn form first, consolidate form first. That's my advice. Uh, Juberhead eight D eight. Um, what's what are your thoughts on using the Genesis bow to teach new archers? The Genesis is fine for uh, new archers for the first time because it requires no setup. The draw weight is consistent all the way through, so you don't need to uh, worry about um, like draw weight and getting the right size for each person. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'd move one as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, I, I can't really recommend the Genesis bow for learning bows. More like the bow you keep around uh, if you need to um, like run lots of classes for lots of people. I'm going to apologize for the lag, I can't do anything about that right now. I think we'll finish it up very quickly. Uh, good website to buy anything for archery. Um, Lancaster Archery is probably the best one for a reference. Uh, I might say the, like, the uh, best moments in archery. Uh, I'd probably just um, say, uh, I'll, I'll say for a different time because the lag is pretty bad now. And we will probably stop there because the lag isn't too bad. So, yeah, we'll stop it there, guys. Sorry for the uh, ending. The net seems to be fluctuating a lot at the moment. Um, but that's the way it is in Australia. So, again, thank you for watching. I do apologize for the ending there. The lag uh, kind of kicked the um, sink out. But thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.